Right, this lesson will provide three examples of writing an equation for an ellipse in standard form. Uh, down here at the bottom is the standard form of the equation for ellipse, um, x minus h squared, y minus k squared. Um, we have over a squared and b squared. Notice it's equal to 1. The equation for an ellipse in standard equation should always be equal to 1. So you can see what we're starting with up here it looks nothing like that. So we're going to follow this set of steps so that we can make this into the standard form of the equation. It's similar to what we did with a circle, but has a few more glitches um, because of this a squared and b squared that will end up being in our equation. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is the same way we start a circle, group the same variable together. So group all the x's together, group all the y's together. So we have a 4x squared minus 48x, and then we have 9y squared, no other y's, and move anything else to the other side. So that negative 288, I'm going to add 288 to both sides to move it over. Okay. The next thing we're going to have to do is complete the square for x and for y. Um, notice y doesn't have anything added to the end, so it's already a complete square. But we have to do the x's. And this is where we differ from the circle a bit, because notice I had a 4 in front of my x squared. I can't really divide everything by 4, because 4 doesn't go into the 9, and that might mess me up there. So what we're going to do is just factor 4 out of the x values. So if I take a 4 out of 48, 48 divided by 4 is 12. And I'm going to put a parenthesis, leave a space there, so that when I complete the square, I have a place to put my number. Okay, now let's complete the square for the x. We have negative 12. Just go over to the side. Remember, we take that number in front of x, divide it by 2, and square it. So negative 12 divided by 2 is negative 6. Squared is 36. So I'm going to add 36 here. It's important we keep the equation balanced on both sides. So I added 36 on this side. But notice with my 4 out here, I've actually added 4 times 36 or 144 to the left-hand side. So I have to add 144 to the right-hand side to keep it balanced. I'm going to factor down my perfect square that I just created. So I have 4 times. Look at that middle number was negative 12. If I divide that in half, I get negative 6 squared is half 12, and it's 6 squared is 36 on the end there, plus 9y squared equals, and we want to go ahead and add those together, 432. Now we're not done. Our last step down here is just to divide both sides by the constant so that the other side of the equation is 1. The constant is this number by itself on the right-hand side. Remember, we wanted that right-hand side to equal 1. So what we're going to do is divide both sides by 432 so that we get a 1 there. And that means we have to divide each term by 432. And basically what I do is reduce the fraction. 4 goes into 432 108 times evenly. 9 goes into 432 48 times evenly. So I end up with x minus 6 squared over 108 plus y squared over 48 <coughs> is equal to 1. And that is my equation written in standard form. So we're going to do two more examples. So again, we have this equation that we're given. It's definitely nothing close to the standard form we have down here. But we just follow that same set of steps to get it to standard form. So the first thing we're asked to do is gather all of the x's together, gather all the y's together, and move anything that doesn't have an x or a y, the constant, to the other side. So if I were to do that, I would have 4x squared minus 16x. There's my x's. Uh, plus 9y squared plus 18y. There's my y's. 
and that negative 11, I'm going to add 11 to both sides to move it over. So I have equals 11. The next thing I notice is that I have a number in front of my x squared. I have a number in front of my y squared. So for my x's, I'm going to take a 4 out of just my x's and put a parenthesis, leave a space at the end so we have room to complete the square. For my y's, there was a 9 in front, so I'm going to factor 9 out of my y. Okay, so that gives me y squared plus 2y, because 9 times 2 would be 18. Over here I have 4 times x squared minus 4x equals 11. Now we're going to complete the square for x and complete the square for y. So again, just take that number in front of the x, that's negative 4, over to the side somewhere, divide it by 2, and square it, and I get positive 4. So I add 4 to my x values, but notice I actually added, if I look at the number in front, I actually added 4 times 4, or 16, to this left-hand side. So on the other side, to keep this balance, I'm going to add 16. Now let's do the y. So notice we have this 2 in front of the y. Let's take it over to the side. 2 divided by 2 is 1, and 1 squared is 1. So we add 1 for our y's, but notice we actually added 9 times 1, or 9. So we add 9 to that other side to keep it balanced. Let's factor those down. Let's see x minus 2 squared plus 9 times y plus 1 squared equals, and we just add those up on the other side, 36. Okay. And our last step is to divide both sides by 36 so that we have a 1 on this right-hand side. Divide by the constant, that's how they describe it in your book. And we get equals 1. You just basically reduce these fractions. 4 goes into 36 9 times. So I end up with x minus 2 squared over 9. And 9 goes into 36 4 times. So I end up with y plus 1 squared over 4. So the standard form of my equation is x minus 2 squared over 9 plus y plus 1 squared over 4 is equal to 1. Okay, I'm going to show one more example. Okay, so again, we have an equation not in standard form. We just go through the steps. First thing you're supposed to do is gather x's. Gather y's, anything without an x or a y goes to the other side. So my x's, I have a 9x squared and a 54x, positive 54x. My y's, I have 4y squared and minus 8y. And then we had a positive 49 that we would subtract from both sides because it didn't have an x or a y and would have just been in our way. Okay, our next job is that if there's anything in front of the x squared or the y squared, we need to factor that out of <clears throat> out of that set of terms. So notice in front of our x, we had a 9 x squared. We're going to pull that out of just the x's. Okay, so 54 divided by 9 gives me 6 x. And then with my parentheses, leave a space to complete the square. For my y's, I had a 4 in front, so if I pull out a 4 from there. 8 divided by 4 gives me 2 equals negative 49. Now let's complete the square. So for my x's, as I had this 6x, so I'm going to take it over to the side. Always divide by 2 and square. And I do that. 6 divided by 2 is 3. 3 squared is 9. So I add 9 here. But again, notice with this 9 in front, I actually added 9 times 9, or 81, to the left-hand side. So I'm going to go over and add 81 to the right-hand side so that I've added the same number to both sides and keep my equation balanced. Now let's complete the square for the y. For the y, notice I had a negative 2 divided by 2, negative 1, squared is positive 1. 
So I add one for my wife, but notice with this four in front of the parentheses, I've actually added four times one or four to the left-hand side, and I go ahead and add that to the right-hand side. Again, just to keep the equation balanced. Let's go ahead and factor those down and simplify what we have. We have 9 times x plus 3 squared, if we factor that, plus 4 times y minus 1 squared, if we factor that. And then we just do our negative 49 plus 81 plus 4. Gives us 36 again. And then our very last step is the step 3 down here. Divide both sides by the constant so that you get 1 on the right-hand side of your equation. Because an ellipse always has 1 on the right-hand side of the equation when it's in standard form. So we reduce these. 9 goes into 36 4 times. 4 goes into 36 9 times. And if I write that out so we can actually see it, we get x. Well, that's ugly. Plus 3 squared over 4. Looks like I'm 5 for my 3. Plus y minus 1 squared over 9 is equal to 1. And we have changed that equation, or written it in standard form of an ellipse.